Hello and welcome back to another how-to video with the Oxbridge Public Library. In today's video, we will be making a weaved wall hanging. This project is super fun to make and can make any room look super aesthetic. In this video, we will also be making our own looms, so please, if you're young, make sure that you have some supervision or help with large tools. In this, you will need a frame, a ruler, wooden dowels, a pencil, a knitting needle, pins or nails. You also need string, yarn, tape, scissors, fork, a staple remover, and pliers. To begin, to obtain our frame, we are going to remove staples from a stretched canvas. Here we're just going to be taking the canvas directly off of the frame so that we can use it as a loom. Once you have your frame, you're going to take a ruler and we're going to make notches about one millimeter apart on both the top and the bottom. Making sure that it's portrait style, we're going to make notches about one millimeter apart. Here we're going to be making about 22 little notches. Next, when using pins, you want to make sure that you're wearing eyewear or some form of glasses just to make sure that those pins don't break off and hit anybody in the eye. Here we're taking our hammer and just hammering them in. Once you're done, you should have about 22 separate nails. Then we're going to take our string, we're going to tie a knot at the base of one, and we're going to weave them back and forth between each of these pins. And we're going to continue this process until it's continued all the way across the frame. Once we're done, we're going to tie a knot on the very end like we did with the first one. I'm making sure to double knot it so it doesn't come undone. Next, once you're done, you're going to take your wooden dowel and you're going to weave it in between each of the strings. It is best to grab the first one, the first string in the series, lift it up, and go up and down in between each string. That means each time you make a weave, you're going to be taking the string that goes from the bottom to the top on the right, lifting it up, and the one on the left you're placing underneath the wooden dowel. We're also going to do the exact same thing with a one inch piece of paper or cardboard just to make sure that there's a separation at the bottom for that tension where the string should go. You wanna make sure that your strings are alternating so that they can weave back and forth properly. Once you're ready, you can grab your first color of wool. Here we're gonna be making a landscape, so I'm gonna be taking some green wool first. And I'm gonna take my needle. I'm just gonna tape the edge around the base of the needle so that I can make my own threading. Of course, if you have a sewing needle that's large enough to take wool, you can use that. But this is my quick solution for this project. Once you're all set with it taped down, you're gonna take your needle and go in between each layer, making sure that they're alternating. I'm going to pull the string tight until the very end, and I'm going to leave about two inches of green to hang off to the side. Here I'm moving down my dowel, and this will make it easier for me to weave in between each layer. Here I should just be able to glide it right through in between those two layers of string. And then I'm going to pull it tight and make sure that it lines up properly. With the fork, I'm going to press them down like so, so that it evens out. You want to make sure that each of the edges of the strings are not pulled too tightly or you're going to have it too tight at the top of your loom. So each round you're going to go underneath back and forth between the two layers. So here I'm just going one, two, one, two, 
directly through and separating. Making sure that I'm crossing through and weaving each layer. And you'll notice as you'll continue to do this that it's going to create alternate patterns. So you'll see that one thread of the yarn is above the string and one is below. And you'll see them alternating back and forth, kind of like a braided situation. Here by moving down my dowel, I'm able to bring my needle directly through. Using my fork, I'm just bringing it all the way down, making sure that each of the layers are pressed firmly up against each other. I'm going to continue this process until I feel that the grass is fully outfitted. Again, I'm weaving back and forth, making sure that they're alternating in between each of the loom strings. using my fork and pressing down each time. And to repeat, I'm pulling down my dowel and sliding them through in between that space in between. This is the image that I'm going to be reproducing. So here, I'm going to take my green and make sure that I can pull it all the way through to the one side firmly pressing with a fork. And then I'm just going to start weaving through until about a little more than halfway and pressing down and pulling it through. You wanna make sure that it comes out on the end with the string that is lower than the top string of the loom. By weaving back and forth, here, I should be able to bring it back and forth and create an incline in the landscape. Here I'm repeating that process of just sliding it through with the dowel and making sure that I'm making all of my inclines quite even. Here if you end up running out of string, you can use your string and pull it through by your hand. This process is a little more challenging but it's helpful also if you have a smaller needle that can thread through. I'm going to weave my string through one last time and this will create the last part of my base of the green here. Next we're moving on with a brown level. So here I'm just going to retape my needle after I've removed the other one. just tape it down so it's easier to glide through. Then I'm going to start on the left side of the canvas and weave back and forth making sure that I'm alternating the pattern opposed to the bottom layer. Here I'm pulling it all the way through and leaving about two inches of slack at the end and I'm going to push it through. Here I'm making sure that I'm alternating back and forth and just following the layers as I go. You want to make sure that you're going up evenly throughout the layers. I'm bringing it to this edge here and just pulling it through. 
You don't want to make sure that it's too tight here. You want to make sure that it's quite loose so that you don't end up losing space at the top. I'm going to continue this process until I've gone through all of the levels and it's gone evenly. Once I've made an even layer, I'm going to start going up in the opposite direction of the incline. This incline is now going to reach towards the top left of the canvas. Once you've made it to the top, making a slightly naturalistic slope, you're going to bring it directly to the top and just leave your axis about two inches and push it directly under. Next, I'm going to make this top yellow peak here, and so I'm going to use some beige wool to do that part. I'm going to, again, tape my needle so that I can thread it through the loom properly. Here I'm going to start at the base and continue until I make an even layer. Again, using my fork and pressing down each layer as I go. I'm going to bring the string a little more than halfway through and then I'm going to start creating a slope going up towards the right. As you can see in this image, I'm making a slight slope so it's going to be more like a hill. And so I'm going to bring it across and then start making a peak. Once I've made a high enough peak, I'm going to bring it to the edge and just leave one space here so that I can start making the top of the hill look more realistic. As you can see, I'm going to come up through the edge that has the lower thread. I run out of string, I'm going to use my tape and I'm going to weave it through as a, its own needle. Once I'm done, I'm going to cut off that little tape bit and then shove the piece under. Now that that's done, we're going to start with the white that's going to be part of this guy here. I'm going to start in this small little crevice here and start fleshing that out as I go.
Once I'm done, I'm gonna continue and make the sun. Here I'm gonna be using some orange wool to create this circular shape. Here I'm gonna remove that so I can use it later. And I'm gonna start about halfway through with my orange wool. If we think of the loom more like a grid, I'm gonna be going about four tassels long, pushing it down, and then start escalating my size as I go, increasing by one each time. As you can see, I'm increasing each level one at a time. Making sure to use a fork each time, I'm pressing down each layer just to make sure that it looks all even. Once I start getting about the half circumference or a half moon shape, I'm going to go up again by four just to make sure that it's even and then continue to de-escalate my weaving. Once your sun is done, you can cut off the access and continue back with your white. Here I'm going to continue just directly to the edge of the circle and I'm going to go under the first string that I used for this sun. Pressing down each edge as I go, this is going to make sure that I have a tight, nice weave. And I'm going to be continuing back through that same hole, creating a loop with the first string. Once you've continued that all the way through, I'm gonna remove my dowel because I actually ended up using too tight of a weave, so it became a little tight at the top. So when I continued here, I was able to remove the dowel and weave through on its own. Here I'm cutting off so that there's two inches of access, and then I'm gonna take my dowel and individually remove each of the top bits here. Once I've weaved it through, I'm going to undo those top bits so that I can tie them off. Here on my last string, I'm going to remove that and then start making small little loops where I can tie them through and create a knot. This will act as a cuff where I can put the dowel through once more as a hanging. Each time I'm doing this, I'm going to make sure that I'm pushing down the last layer of thread that I weaved through and tying it so it looks even. Once you're done, you can weave through the dowel and you'll have a finished piece. Once you remove that green strip at the bottom, you can tie the same knots that you did at the top on the bottom. To make sure that this edge is completely tied off, I'm gonna wrap it around the first green string that I wrapped through my weave and just make sure that I knot it properly. Once you're done, you can take your scissors here and start making a little tasseled bottom. Once done, I'm gonna take a skewer or you can take a sharper needle and then push through underneath each one of those flaps 
the excess of the yarn that's left over. This will help secure it. Flipping it over so it's on its back, you can see there's a little bit of an ugly mess on the back, but it doesn't matter because that will be facing the wall. Each time I'm using my skewer and just pushing underneath one of the little loops and pulling it tight so that they edge, so that the access of that yarn is just pulled through. Once it's secure on the back, you can cut off all the access and you'll have a finished piece. To finish it off, I'm going to use a saw and cut off the edge. Here I'm using a pencil to mark where I would like it cut and taking my saw and cutting it so that it's a little bit shorter. Once done, I'm gonna take another piece of string and start tying a knot on the edge. Once you made a nice knot here, I'm going to tie it onto the very end and loop it over multiple times. And there you have it, a finished wall hanging. I wanna thank you for watching this video and if you like more content like this, please come back to the Oxford Public Library's YouTube channel.